Um, yeah, good morning. Um, my name is Sako Tihveren and, and, um, and today, this morning, uh, just a brief uh, reference to the angle of this presentation. So, so I was trying to try and capture the, um, the little bit of the per perhaps difficulty at landing a relevant coding, coding role in Finland, even though everyone says that, yes, Finland needs a lot more you know, people in general, but also in particular developers. I even made a movie out of this topic uh, at the length of 25 minutes uh, three years ago. So you know, it's a really, really, really important topic that we, we, we get more people in the country. But at the same time, when you start applying to jobs, it's not actually that easy. You know, it's doable if you are, you know, have experience of you know, um, 10 years in professional software coding and all the rest of it, you know, no problem. You just reach out to the first and that's pretty much done. But you know, at the situation when you know, you've got a couple of years uh, experience perhaps and you would be motivated, it might not be as simple as that. So um, a look at this situation um, you know, is the topic. Just briefly about myself. In the 2000s, uh, when I was studying at the University of Edinburgh, I was wanting to become a teacher and, uh, and did my master's also in education. And at that time, I was starting to think about, I'm not going to be doing this year on year on year stuff that I was seeing myself becoming uh, retired already. So I decided that I'll do something else. After a couple of years of figuring out uh, at, uh, as a daycare manager, making me pretty unique recruiter, I believe. Um, I joined the public sector uh, in recruitment roles, so all sorts of, you know, a little bit IT, but also nursing, uh, medical, uh, teaching, urban planning, yada, yada, yada. And I got into the topic of recruitment to the extent that uh, I wanted to, I don't know what's wrong with me, but do a PhD on, on the topic. Um, I spent nearly two full years um, on the research, not really much to show, show, show up for um, the time spent in terms of publications, but I learned myself a lot, uh, so, so no regrets on there, let's put it that way. And then after that, uh, about five years ago, um, I joined the IT um, industry explicitly, uh, worked as a, you know, an in-house role and as a, a consultant as well in a headhunter's role. Uh, for the past couple of years before I got the phone call about uh, in mid-April asking um, the call from Elisa Polistar that, hey, you know, would you like to come back to the in-house recruitment world uh, to work for the company? And yeah, by the way, you would need to move to Sweden. And I was like, uh, just wait a moment, texted my wife. She said, yes. And I, I, I called back, yeah, Wayne. So that was kind of like 30, 30 minutes decision making taking place for us. And, uh, and yeah, uh, no regrets. <laughs> Again, enjoying, enjoying the time, both Sweden and both Elisa Polistar. You know, if you're interested in uh, knowing more about the company, do reach out. Okay. Um, about the sort of very basics, just to get us going. Um, there is about a million and one different ways of, 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 of landing a role, uh, a relevant job, starting from contacting you know, a lot of recruiters and you know, uh, contacting um, the hiring managers, uh, you know, identifying the company you would really want to work for, and then you just reach out and say, you know, I would like to discuss of opportunities. All these are you know, very valid, but you know, let's just take this very sort of basic approach, which is, you know, Make sure that you, you've got your CV and your LinkedIn account correct. You know, just the very basics. So after that, it's good to go sort of to, to, to start identifying, you know, what are the opportunities um, you can land or then you really want to land. And, you know, let's not spend too much time on this, but, you know, just to make sure, you know, focused information, um, professional, clear communications, no typos and all that type of stuff. There's sometimes there can be a hiring manager thinking, hey, there's some sort of an analog between um, writing a very good um, CV and writing very good code. It's not always the case, but sometimes there can be. So, you know, just pay attention to, to the, the little details as well. 
And, um, and then thinking about the, the LinkedIn profile, it might sound really, really um, anal. I don't know if, if that's a good word to use, but you know, to add different uh, tech stack items to your profile. But that's, you know, if you want to be found by um, you know, recruiters, they tend to use the LinkedIn search quite often and, uh, um, you know, the different skills, you know, pop up quite nicely, um, you know, so in case you are interested in uh, to be found. If you're not, then, yeah, don't mention them. Um, and then, you know, reaching out to companies. So um, thinking about Finland these days, um, there's a lot of different job boards, but um, I would argue that at this time, thinking about especially not necessarily knowing fluent Finnish, that LinkedIn might be one of, one of the best ones. And of course, then, you know, being able to communicate on one platform is always a good thing. But then, of course, you know, use, you know, these networking events like React Conference to talk to, you know, one another and, uh, and realize that, hey, you know, um, your new new friends company they might be actually needing you know the skills that you have for example and uh, do the same in different contexts and uh, and it will work out wonders if you start googling for something like rack developer job helsinki what you end up with is with the companies that are really good at you know doing digital marketing you come up with a lot of different job boards uh, but you don't get any sort of assurance that these companies are per se the best to be working at um, so just briefly about the cv intros um, or linkedin intros um, i was having a chat with this um, one person a couple of weeks ago who was um, you know sharing his background you know had done a lawyer's degree previously uh, quite some time ago and, uh, and landed in Finland a few years ago and was now doing a degree in IT and wanting to start um, a UI or UX type of an inter uh, internship and I asked him that all's well you have a plan you you know how to proceed so why not then communicate what you just said you know on the intro rather than you know creating this world embracing sort of i've been doing this responsible stuff and and and, and i've been in you know uh, in law and etc but not really been explicit about what you want to do next and um, and and so you know it's just an, an example but you know um, being explicit uh, matters and um, and yeah I think uh, that's a fair point all right um, taking a little bit of a different angle then um, we just had a look pre briefly about that yeah you know how to start and go about with the uh, the different um, job application uh, reaching out to people and etc then what do the employers assess in general well it starts with the seniority of you know tech skills and, and, and the breadth of, of, of the tech skills you know um, but then you know thinking about the Finnish companies the big question next to it is is where the candidate is applying from in Finland within EU outside of EU all these steps sort of you know you know it's a different setup in terms of how to proceed to actually hire the person to the company um, and, uh, and 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 you know if, if one is applying from EU and the company hasn't hired expats before um, you know I think a lot of the you know hiring managers and HR people think yeah no problem when it comes to EU people because you know it's easy you know you can just uh, move in and, uh, and get the paperwork done afterwards but outside of EU yeah there might be a threshold you know there's a lot of companies that already hire internationals and have very international staff in in Finland and all the rest of it but at the same time there's a lot of surprisingly many companies that are still sort of communicating with the clients in Finnish and all the rest of it and and especially agencies uh, that don't tend to um, be as um, pro-international uh, staff as you could imagine you know and then it's all about um, you know the motivation you know communication skills especially you know if you're working in a in a consultant role and um, 
and the salary expectations, of course, come into play as well. You know, it's, you know, two years ago I was helping a, a good company uh, to, to hire a software architect and they had a hard upper limit of 6,000 and the requirements were X, Y and Z, you know, being there, done that. And then, you know, came, came up with very good candidates and they all had a salary between seven and 8,000 uh, euros per month. And it was just, you know, it's just one of these things that then you need to really sort of balance out, you know, what's important and what's not, you know, are you really hard on the salary level uh, uh, limits and, and all the rest of it. And, um, and yeah, when sourcing, i.e. the recruiter reaching out to candidates or, or you reaching out to, to your colleague and being introduced to, to a recruiter or whatever, uh, you know, at the end of the day, these are the, the rough, roughly the key items that will be looked at. Okay, then to the slide that might make me the most negative man uh, of the React conference, at least based on this. A lot of why it doesn't work out. A lot of why it doesn't work out. Um, I, 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 I sort of divided the, 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 the rationale um, to that sort of generic applicants, kind of like uh, why it doesn't work out, and then the applicants um, who are applying from abroad um, and, uh, and, and, and what, what type of a um, logic there is to saying no to a developer because as we all know there's a lack of developers and all the rest of it and still companies come to say no so why is that um, and just a quick comment these items rarely exist sort of as a standalone element there's always kind of a combination of a number of things but you know it makes sense probably but just just to say out loud um, but yeah, first, the lack of required seniority, you know, um, it can be a lack of experience in software production. Um, it, it might be then, you know, if there's a um, coding exercise or, or, or such that, you know, there's a lack of uh, clean code that, you know, one's able to do the task, but not according to um, the hiring party's liking. Um, there might be some elements of um, you know, language or, or, or um, cloud that, you know, one hasn't been using and, and, and etc. Um, then perhaps linking this lack of required seniority then to salary, you know, if, if, if one's got um, a year of, 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 of experience producing, uh, you know, and, and contribu contributing to professional, uh, professionally to, to software and, and expectation is to go straight to 6K uh, salary, yeah, you know, it's likely that, you know, it's, it's going to be a mismatch. And, uh, and, you know, looking at the company level just a little bit more, there's a continuous mismatch or, or, or balancing act, you know, if you like, uh, between the, uh, the, the sort of uh, developing developer salaries, because they are going high, un unless now we really hit the recession a big time. Because then, of course, you know, the, the, the depression uh, economically can create a different situation if a lot of senior developers are laid off by companies other than Klarna. Um, it can create a, a different, different type of a logic in place, uh, theoretically, but I don't, I, don't, I don't expect to see that, really. <clears throat> so, so the companies, in essence, they're always coming just a little bit behind of the market levels because they're always balancing sort of the in, internal structure of salaries and what's the limit and all the rest of it. And, uh, excuse me, the bigger the company, it tends to be uh, the, the harder the, uh, um, the salary uh, levels, uh, the limits. Um, but that's a, that's a rough estimate. Um, exceptions exist, I'm sure. But then, you know, if the salary issue, you know, one wants to sort of earn you know, what one's, uh, you know, worth, but the company can't provide an opportunity in-house, i.e. An, as an employee, then, you know, the consultancy invoicing is an option, of course. And, uh, and then, you know, the, you know, some of the perks for the employer then is that they don't sign up, they don't really commit to the senior developer, for example, who's setting up uh, one's own business uh, to, to, to invoice by the hour. Um, then there can be 
a view of you know, organization cultural mismatch. So for example, if one's been working for different startups, you know, half a year here, half a year there, kind of like you know, trying out different things, uh, new, new companies and et cetera being sort of formed and they don't really fly and then moving forwards, you know, small uh, group of people and et cetera. A corporate hiring is likely to be sort of thinking, hey, our stable um, situation with everything really um, can be a bit of a, hey, does this person actually enjoy the work here? You know, because it might be just a little bit too boring, for example, um, the, the, the scenario. And I think it's a, it's a good question to ask. Um, I've worked both for corporations and, and, and startups and, and, and the vibe and the sort of, hey, what can we do and how can we solve it? All these elements, they are quite different, you know, in comparison to start, you know, a startup to, to a corporation or a, an established company. And, um, and yeah, just uh, lack of team playing mentality. You know, nobody wants to be working uh, with an a-hole, a you know, uh, as, as a colleague, uh, unless one's a very genius person, you know, of course, in terms of coding and, and things can be um, taken into perspective, let's put it that way. Um, and again, the more communicative the role is, you know, the communication skills come into play. Okay. Then looking at it, the, um, um, the abroad um, applicants. <sighs> Sigh. <laughs> I think, um, you know, the experience of the company hiring internationals is crucial to like, look at. Um, you know, if the company has hired from abroad before, they realize it's no biggie, it's, it's no problem. It takes a little bit more time, but no problem. If they haven't done it, yeah, you know, there, there are these massive questions of, ah, you know, what's going to go wrong and all the rest of it. It's, you know, my single word of advice for everyone thinking about, hey, you know, I would love to be working in Finland, but I would rather find the job first and move in later, yeah. Uh, find out about the companies who've done it, you know, um, hired from abroad and, uh, and et cetera. Because after that, the company's definitely okay with the idea that, uh, you know, let's be uh, bringing in more people. Then also, um, I don't know if you've come across with, um, you know, the uh, employer of, of record services, not embracing deal, but deal is a good example. Um, a scale up um, from California, I believe, and uh, basically they provide the service so that the employer can hire a person in another country without having um, their own legal en um, entity in the country. So basically, if you're thinking about working for a Finnish company, one of the options might be that, you know, you start the work remotely and then at some point you relocate, you know, whatever you agree with the, uh, um, the hiring, hiring party. Um, but yeah, thinking about the company logic, the company and the individuals in the company, you know, what are the sort of elements that come into play um, when thinking about hiring from abroad? Um, you know, the company is then, you know, thinking about, you know, whether to commit to a long relocation process. Again, if there's no experience, they might exaggerate it, um, how long it takes. But still, you know, it's, uh, it's a fair, it's a fair point. It's, it's not the same as hiring someone um, who's already in Finland and, and might have a very short notice period. It might be a month, two months um, to the start of the employee. Whereas with relocation, uh, you know, it can be from a few months to half a year or such like. There's, I don't know how common it is, but I've seen and heard numerous company representatives, hiring managers talk about that, you know, if they do a bit of an extra task of hiring, um, relocating and, and such, there's this mindset that perhaps we should ideally get an, a bit of an additional level of, of know-how to the company. So, so something in particular that the individual can contribute. I don't know how common this mindset is, but I've, I've heard a dozen company reps to kind of like when, when talking about this topic to, to refer to this, that, hey, it can be a little bit tricky, um, you know, uh, extra hurdle, etc. 
So, so you know, there's this mindset then, you know, for someone who's applying from abroad that, you know, making a very stellar case of one skills and all the rest of it. And of course, then the question of, you know, whether one's committed to Finland and etc. Come November, come slush time, you know, the weather is not the prettiest, you know, it's all doom and gloom uh, if you ask the Finns at least. Um, but, uh, but yes. And um, then the work cultural mismatch. Um, by that, um, I'm trying to phrase things in a positive way. Uh, I think there can be nastier expressions to be found. But in general, I think, you know, if you think about the work culture in Finland, uh, you know, you expect this mindset of bluntness, healthy transparency of skills and know-how and etc. So if, you, if one's given a project, hey, you know, you run with this, you know, one is then highlighting immediately say, you know, yeah, I, I got this, this and that, but these two topics, I actually don't know. I need some help with that. And, and, and the trust towards the sort of newcomers to contribute in such a fashion is best assessed at the time when one's applying. So if you are applying to Finland, make your CV, your profile, transparent in terms of skills that, uh, you know, you boost your skills, sure, what you can do and all the rest of it, but also highlight the elements that you don't know, you know, because um, that's the point when, when these sort of uh, stereotypes come into play when, you know, by the recruiters and hiring managers. That's, that's, how I, that's how I view it. And this lack of hierarchy mindset, you know, um, if there's a company of 50 people, you know, the, the, the mindset is that, uh, you know, the developer noticing that, hey, I'm worried about something and it hasn't been taken care of, you know, the developer will then reach out to the CEO. Have you, have you noticed this? And this is sort of welcomed, you know, over here. You know, this is sort of ex expected a little bit. And yeah, just thinking about the, the companies, you know, why they don't hire you know, from abroad more eagerly and, and, and et cetera, perhaps a bit of a lack of strategic mindset, you know, rather merry-go-round recruit one another's people and, and et cetera, and, uh, and pay the um, recruiter, headhunter, 15K uh, a, a case and all the rest of it. And uh, yeah, not really uh, creating a solution, I would argue, but yeah. So just to wrap up a little bit, um, when thinking about, you know, um, making it, you know, in Finland or in other countries, a similar logic in place based on the four, last four months uh, with um, the Swedish company, um, you know, as a junior developer, with a junior developer profile, uh, you know, re think about the startups because they are very eager for, for new, new skills, uh, new people, um, use networks, you know, like, again, React conference, a perfect example. Um, you know, different Slack groups. Uh, there's Cordy Clinica group and, 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 and etc. cetera um, um, that can be considered to, to, to use. And then sort of have the mindset of independently moving to Finland, uh, you know, rather than being relocated and uh, provided the service. And then with a the senior developer profile, you know, both outside of and inside of the EU, you know, if, you know, there's always, always an option uh, to work via the uh, employer of record service. Um, and then, you know, think about the companies that, you know, one can read from the newspapers, uh, at least in Finland, but, uh, but, you know, the companies that get the healthy dose of, of, of funding. And, uh, and, and, you know, they're going to be, you know, recruiting soon, um, you know, there's, I saw um, a company downstairs having their stand uh, that I was reading half a year ago um, over here at the React conference. Um, I read half a year ago, they landed a good, uh, good amount of funding for the company. And now they're here and before uh, they hadn't been heard of. So, so it's this logic of funding recruitment always in place. I, I'm sure you know it, but, um, but these companies that get the funding, it's obvious that, uh, you know, they are going to be hiring uh, soon. And then multinational companies, MNCs and others that have, have hired from abroad uh, before. And you could be expected, you know, to get the uh, re relocation uh, service, i.e. paid 
um, expenses uh, moving to Finland. And for the very last word, um, I asked um, in the uh, React conference Slack group uh, if there are any particular questions. I got this one in early, early week. Uh, how to find information on employers for developers uh, and formed it badly, but uh, you know, what about freelancing work in Finland? And, um, and I was just uh, going through briefly about information on, on you know, how to find um, and what to look for. And, uh, and I had a look on these number of lists uh, that the Google organically brings up and, uh, and they are mostly, you know, it's just hearsay or, or, or sponsored, sponsored uh, lists of, of good, good employers and all the rest of it. Glassdoor is pretty much the first that shares data on what are the actually, you know, uh, recommended places to work at and, and all that type of stuff. And, uh, and how to become a freelance developer in Finland and about the brokers. Uh, check the GitHub link um, by Sam Hossein. Um, he has shared the nitty gritty details of how to become a freelance developer in, 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 in Finland uh, a few years ago and has updated the material uh, quite a bit. So, so yes, check Sam's, Sam's material. Um, this last slide apparently is rhetorical. <laughs> Questions can be raised after these sessions, I've understood. Uh, happy to uh, join in mingling and uh, having a chat uh, upstairs uh, in, a, in a little, little while. Many thank you for uh, listening.